much. So let's come to Tony Iommi, who is uh, local to here. But in, oh, it's a applause. <laughs> he's, he's local to here, but internationally around as a groundbreaking guitarist, songwriter, and founder of Black Sabbath. In fact, Tony, you have some claim to have created a whole new genre of music. You're the Chuck Berry of heavy metal. <laughs> uh, your fellow black Sabbatarian, the geezer butler, was on uh, Loose Ends recently, and we used it as an excuse to hear something of one of your classic tracks, Paranoid. So let's use it as an excuse again. <laughs> Here it is. So there you are. That's the voice of Ozzy Osbourne, the words of Giza Butler, and the heavy metal guitar of Tony Iommi. Um, so, do, do you like listening to your classic tracks like that in situations like this, or do uh, you think, "Oh, not again"? <laughs> <laughs> I've got no option, have I? Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's great. I mean, it's it's what we started, and um, I've enjoyed every minute yeah. of it from doing all the shows and yeah. and hearing this, the old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And can you remember the, the you know writing that and coming up with those riffs, or was it a? I can, I can yeah. remember that one for sure. I was, uh, <clears throat> we were in the studio doing Paranoid album, and the producer said, uh, the, the, the other guys went out for something to eat, and I sat in the studio and he said, "We need another song. We haven't got enough songs on the album. Can you put one together?" I went, well, "No." <laughs> <laughs> he went, "Well, yeah, we were only in there for a couple of days, you see." Yeah, and. Um, I said, well, I don't know. I've never written a three-minute song. Sabbath's always been five minutes or six minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> so I came up with this idea and waited till the others come back from the, the pub. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> played them the idea. And basically, we'd done it there and then, you know. So it was a good half hour's work for you. That, 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 that. <laughs> it was. Yeah, and you missed out on <laughs> And it stood the test of time, you know. Certainly. <laughs> now, another thing I'm going to ask you, it's an old story for the beginning of your whole guitar playing career, but it is such a striking one, is that you created heavy metal, but heavy metal created you in the sense you had a, an accident that uh, almost deprived you of an ability to play guitar at all. Just, if you could, could you just tell, tell us about that again? No. <laughs> um, well, I used to work in a sheet metal work factory doing uh, arc welding and gas welding. And uh, they used to send the metal down to me to, to weld. Uh, the, the person would do the press and bend it and send it to me. Uh, and the one day this person didn't come into work and the manager said, well, you've got to go on the machine. <laughs> So I went on this machine, which I had no idea how to work it. And you'd never get away with it these days. The pedal was like this, you know. Yeah. And um, as I pushed the sheet metal work through, the guillotine came down on my hand. Yeah. So as I pulled my hand back, I pulled the ends of the two fingers off. Yeah. And, fingers um, of your right hand. Yeah, yeah. And, but that is my... Yeah. Because I'm left-handed. You're left-handed, so you play with that. That's the, yeah. that's the business end of actually... That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was a, uh, you know, devastating, really. And this was your last day at work, wasn't it? It was you, my last day at work. <laughs> going off to be a guitarist. I was going uh, to, I, I was going to join in this. I uh, got a job with this band that were going to Europe, and I thought, great, this is brilliant. Done in the morning, I worked in the morning. Went home for lunch, and I said to me, mum, oh, I'm not going to go in this afternoon. You go back to work. You finish off properly. Yeah. <laughs> so it was. Uh, it's her fault, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us what you had to do to be enabled, because you didn't want to switch and become a right-handed well, guitarist, you know, so you could have plucked with the, with the fingers you had on that. I mean, you still well, wanted to play that way around. Yeah, I never even thought of that. So I, I, uh, I went to the hospital, and, and they said, you might as well forget playing. And I wouldn't accept that. I, I, I tried to come up with an idea that I could play, or how I could do it, so I made my own fingertips. Yeah. That having your fingers sort of reconstructed in that way, that contributed to your style. You also you went for different strings, lighter well, it, strings. It, it made me approach the guitar different because I couldn't play the way I could before and I, and I couldn't play a full chord mm. um, so, because they're big lumps on your fingers. Yeah. 
So I had to come up with an idea of how to make a bigger sound. So that's really what I worked on. And you also contributed a sound. You're using, uh, you know, the, the diminished fifth and all those sort of dark, devilish sounds. Was that who was that in the band that was? Uh, you're clearly Mr. Nice Guy, uh, but so, who was producing this devilish approach? Well, I, I just came up with that sort of idea. I liked, I liked the idea of that sound of, of, of making it sort of. A bit evilly sounding. I used to like to go and see horror films, and so that used to give me ideas. And uh, and Giza was into that as well. We used to go to the cinema at midnight horror movie. And that's where you got the name Black Sabbath. Black from. Sabbath, yeah. Uh, you you, and, you gave uh, up the name Polka Tulk Blues Band, uh, which um, I don't know mad, why. Really. Mad. <laughs> it, it wasn't our idea. I might add that. Um, that was the old management. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, so that we we developed a sound and. Uh, and in them days, I mean, it was there was nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, and of course, it, it was hard to get gigs because we weren't we weren't the in thing at the time. No, it was a long while. Well, you know, heavy metal was regarded as a bit of a sort of out there, rather weird sort well, of there subculture. Was, there was no heavy metal then. Yeah. We were the first. You were you created it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then you um, had Ozzy Osbourne. I know from reading Geezer's book was quite a handful in terms of. Uh, oh, well, you going, could say yeah. that. Really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ozzy used to be at the same school. We were at the same school together a year younger than me. Yeah. But when Bill and I were looking for a singer, we went round to, we saw the advert, Ozzy Zig requires gig. So we go round to this address and they knocked on the door and his mum answered and we said, we've come about the advert. And she went, John, it's for you. And he come up and I saw him and I said to Bill, forget it, forget it. <laughs> and he went, Bill's going, what? I said, I'll tell you later. As he came out, I said, oh, no, I said, I, oh, I don't think he can sing. I know him from school and I have never knew he could yeah. sing. <laughs> and so we were sort of deaf for the idea. And then about three or four days later, he come round to my house, because we didn't live that far away, with Giza, yeah. looking for a drummer. <laughs> and Bill was at my house at that time, and, and I thought, oh, Bill was a drummer. Bill went, oh, I'm, not, I'm not doing it without you. So basically, that's how it started, and so we all got together and, yeah. and it was an horrendous racket <laughs> I've got to say Goose yeah. had never played bass before we sounded awful really <laughs> did. when did it all click into place then it, it did eventually yeah, yeah when when was the moment you thought oh no we've got something here the, the, the time it all took place was when we started writing our own stuff yeah but we did have a job getting work because of what we did well, you did eventually, though. You got, you got someone. Yeah, and I want, to, I'm afraid I want to spool yeah. forward to right up to date because it's happened to be uh, two projects <coughs> both you and Stephen are doing, which are um, uh, unusual in a way. So there's a, a, the ballet. Uh, you're doing a ballet in, in each I'm case. I'm not what, dancing in it, yeah, by the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a Black Sabbath ballet and also a Peaky Blinders ballet. So the Black Sabbath has is, is already been on stage, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. They sold out straight away. It's amazing. I... I mean, when they first come to me about that, I thought, how oh, the bloody hell am I going to tell the others about these yeah. ideas? Yeah. Ozzy went, a ballet, <laughs> as he would. I was wondering how they were going to do it, and uh, I went to some of their rehearsals, and, so, and it was all taking shape, and it, it really worked. And Stephen, that's uh, also the Peaky Blinders ballet. This is Ballet yeah. Rombert. Ballet Rombert, and yeah. we, uh, again, that sold out next year it's going to go to Europe and to America as well. Yes. So we're doing a Peaky Sabbath one soon. <laughs> we should. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for joining us today. Uh, uh, Tony appears in the first episode of Greatest Guitar Riffs on Sky Arts. And that's on the 24th of November. The series runs on three consecutive nights. Thank you very much for joining us here on Loose Ends. Tony Iommi. <laughs> so.